This is where it becomes a little more important to watch the to watch your wind vane, your windex, because this is where that accidental drive can happen. And they're, they're pretty hard on the equipment and they're kind of scary and they can be dangerous because I've got that boom really low now. So if I were to stand up and you jive, you're gonna have to figure out how to sail this boat by yourself. So I'm gonna be out of So 
That's what I do. I don't clean, reeling it in, cleaning it. Because as soon as you reel it in and you're cleated, now whatever happens, you're locked in. And until you unclean, if, if that wind catches it and it starts pushing you over, you can't just let it go and let it flop out and shit speed and, and power. It's cleated in. There's a saying, never make fast the sheets of a small boat. And that's why. But that one, you make fast the sheets. You just never want it to get yourself into a position where having your sheets locked in is going to get you in trouble. And jiving is one of those situations. So, we're getting fairly close to the shore. I do want to head a little further down the wind that way. So, um, the most important thing is to manage that. So, as you're jiving, just reach out and grab that sail, pull it into center as much as you can, and then as soon as the wind catches it, it will start to As soon as the wind catches it, just let it go over and then gently let it go out. And I'll do the hit sail. And then now you're keeping the arrow yep, for what you can see and then we're headed down and down. So, yeah. But you can see where an uncontrolled jive would be very, very scary. Yeah. Because I mean that, even that will very sudden. bigger in all dimensions, so it's, but it's, it's three feet longer, and about 2,000 or so pounds heavier. It handles, it handles wind and wave action better, rather, this one does, because it's, it's heavier, so it responds more slowly. It's deeper than a, a swung 
Catalina 25, but it's not as deep as the full keel on Catalina 25. It's an intermediate depth keel, and it's a good compromise keel. But there's a guy that has one, and he launches it off the trailer. So I could possibly get a green keel Catalina 27. But Catalina 27 doesn't have a lot more space on the boat. The cockpit benches are essentially the same length. The two additional feet comes from the rudder goes through a post here and goes through the bottom of the hull and you have two feet or a foot and a half of bench space back here. And instead of the engine mounting here on the side, the engine mounts in a little pocket back here. And so you got extra space on it, but inside the Catalina 27, the cabin space forward to uh, forward to rear is similar in size. The forward berth in the Catalina 27 is actually smaller than one of these ones, so it's not as comfortable to sleep on. It's got a little bit more width to it. The biggest benefit of a 27 is you've got more standing headroom. The standing headroom in here is like 5.5. The standing headroom in the Catalina 27 is like 6. So I could stand fully upright comfortably in the Catalina 27. We're in here, I've got a big head to the side. Mom can stand up in here. And the primary reason I got the bigger boat is because I wanted mom to be comfortable. And within reason, I wanted the kids to be comfortable too, even though they're already around. They just go on their own. But for now, we use it as our, our weekend getaway. And you know, if we spend the night on it or two, it's nice to have a little bit more room to move around. So the Catalina 22 is just too small for that. The Catalina 27 doesn't have as much, doesn't have enough advantages for me to go up to that size of a boat. And and to get bigger than a Catalina 27, now you're talking full keel, big, huge, Catalina 30, 11 feet high, can't take it down the road without permits. You know, you have to have wide boat fly views. So this is a good size. I can try to travel with this anywhere, and drag it behind my truck. It's just, it's just a nice, nice boat. Everything that I would want to go for. Now, if I lived on the Great Lakes, Catalina 30 all the way. Because I would have a slip, water depth on Lake Erie wouldn't be an issue in most places. Um, having a five foot, you know, five foot draft wouldn't be a problem. I would never need to take it anywhere else. I mean, you could see on a lake like this where it'd be like, man, I want to sail somewhere else. Yeah. You know, this lake's tiny. So if I was on Lake Erie though, yeah, I I get a Catalina 30 and never go back. And yes, I would pay two or three times as much per year to own it and maintain it, but I would be sailing on some of the best sailing water in the world with all kinds of things to do. There's islands out there, there's tourist islands out there where you can go out, there's bands and nightclubs and restaurants and entertainment going on and festivals all summer long. And Lake Erie is definitely a hot spot for sailing. Wonderful place. Superior is okay. It doesn't have as much, I don't think, to do. At least in the area where I sail on Lake Superior, the Apostle Island is not a sea. through the 